Welcome to Jesus Life Lessons. Let's go. Let's go. Hey everyone and welcome to Life Lessons with Jason. It's your boy Jason and for the next couple of weeks I'm going to be taking on a journey talking about the highs of life, the lows, failures, successes and tips for you to make it through. We're going to be sitting down with 10 amazing Jamaican professionals sharing their stories, giving us best practices and how we can better ourselves as we go through life. So stay tuned and let's go. All right, so today we have Mr. Lish Smith all the way over in Japan. Hey, Lish, how are you doing? What's up? Hey, I'm well. Um, how are you? I'm good. I'm good. You know, welcome to Life Lessons with Jason. Um, Jason, I guess. Yeah, you can say that. Yeah. <laughs> but okay, today we're going to have a, a little talk about your yeah, university story. I was following social media and it seems as though you created some kind of pandemonium on RG the other day when you were talking about your story. So we just wanted to drop based on that. So first of all, what do you do now? Where are you? What are you up to? Okay, so I'm living two hours away from Tokyo. So I'm living in Japan. I'm a teacher at this point. Oh. I'm back home in Jamaica. I am and was a journalist because I still do <laughs> small things here and there, not necessarily active. But I'm pretty much doing teaching, I'm doing journalism, I'm also doing a bit of advocacy. So you can say that my, my feet are wet. <laughs> All right, regards. that's good. But funny enough, um, the transition from journalism to teaching, how did that come about? You know, it's very good that you asked that because a lot of people don't ask that question. Um, I think it was a case where I was doing media and media mm -hmm. was going well for me, but it wasn't going as well as I wanted it to in the sense that I think I wanted a Russian come up, hurry up and come up in Jamaican terms kind of thing. And, you know, I realized that it was not going to happen, you know, and mm -hmm. it doesn't always happen like that. And so something said to me, Lidge, you know, instead of being so concerned about bossing, instead of being so concerned about um what the public may see as you going on a trajectory or mm -hmm. something you need to do something that is lasting to you you know you're not 20 anymore you're approaching 25 26 see here <laughs> line going away this is the yeah, this, this is, is definitely the sign hair. of it and so i said to myself you know i need to do something that i can do well something that i am passionate about and something that to say the least, brings in, you know, dough to ensure that I do <laughs> achieve all that I need to do. Um, and so I decided that I was going to apply to come to Japan through a JET program, that's the Japanese Exchange Teaching Program, mm -hmm. and very rigid process. I had to do interviews, screening, I had to do a lot of essay writing, um, and that's how I'm here. So it was a case where I knew that I loved media, but at the same time, the reality is media in Jamaica is not it. Not it. Well, and not not saying that it's not it, but it takes long for it to be it. And we don't have much time <laughs> on this earth. So if you can find another route that you are passionate about and something that you can tap into that makes more sense for you and your family, then I would, I would definitely um, implore you to do that. So that's what I did. Okay, great. So the, the whole idea of Life Lessons with Jason is to really drop some gems to persons who are looking and probably going through similar um, challenges how they can overcome. So let's talk about surviving university a little bit. So what right. program were you in, enrolled to do? Yeah, so I was um, accepted to do a Bachelor of Arts in Journalism at mm -hmm. Karimak. Big up Karimak. Ooh, ooh. Um, so I think my aim was to just be on TV at the time, which I think that's every youngster's dream um, mm -hmm. who wants to do journalism in Jamaica. Well, um, let, let's not say everybody. For the most part because you know a lot of people growing up seeing the neville and the simon and the daily and the simone mm -hmm. on tv and so you, you basically just say you want to do that and so that's yeah. what i wanted to do not thinking that you know i needed to do much work because i just thought it was just so natural for them they spoke mm -hmm. extemporaneously and so okay i can do that why don't i just apply for the program and i thought that the three years would have been easy breezy um no it wasn't definitely wasn't <laughs> So it was a three-year program, yes. How long did you end up staying at UWIC for the first degree? So I spent six years, so pretty much double the time. Um, it, it's very, <laughs> looking back at it now, I'm like, boy, how can you talk about this, you know, with so much pride behind it? But I think 
at the end of the day, I learned so many lessons that I feel like I would not have learned if I graduated in three years. And it sounds very corny to say that. But mm-hmm. we can talk about that a bit later. But it took me three years because um, of two reasons. Just the immaturity and the inexperience. And I know they can both be intertwined if you really look at it. But I have mm-hmm. two I have two reason I have a reason why I split them, the immaturity and the, the, the inexperience. All right, so I can definitely relate somewhat. My degree was supposed to take three years. It took me four years because I could not pass one programming course. I literally did the course about four times. Literally do one programming course <laughs> four times. So No, Jason. Uh, and it's so funny because I mean I've known you for a while. Mm -hmm. And I would not have imagined because I just know that Jason is the type of person that is always booming, always booming. And so to hear that you you literally had to do something over four times, like if you never tell me, I would not have imagined. Maybe somebody would get up and say, oh, Lidge is clearly doing this course (laughs) over and over again. But like I've always seen, you're always head high, you know, so, oh, that's very surprising. Four times? For Lidge, Lidge, listen, listen, let us not rub it in. I'm telling you, it was the hardest course to pass. It was, wow. uh, you know, funny enough, what well, bright now, you know, I, I got there, you know, I got no, there. No. No. Bright now, sure but never so. I think the, the categories you gave as your reasons why you were delayed a bit, I think that is the same thing that happened to me. So let's speak about those first. Let's start with, you said immaturity. Yeah. So immaturity in the sense of, I came to university when I was 16 going on to 17. So pretty mm-hmm. much a baby yeah. at that point. Yeah. So you're supposed to be in about grade 10, grade 11 at that time. And I'm mm-hmm. now at UWE. Um, coming from a boys' school, it's, it's very different coming from a boys' school, going into a co-ed environment, and then a co-ed yeah. environment where, where there are so many things. And then not only is the school a school for Jamaicans, but of course, it's multicultural. So at this point, you're now seeing everything almost like a kid in a candy store. Oh, I want to go there. Or I want to do this. or I want to be friends with these type of people. And so that's where they inexperience came in because I felt like if I knew things, if I experienced things, then I would not have been so immature in my approach to them. So yeah. apart from being young and apart from being very impressionable, everything in, in the university space counted except the actual courses. And I don't know at what point I feel like my mother spent so much money and my father spent so much money and time <laughs> for me to just go there to, to create a friend's circle. Um, and so I found that more than anything else, I was going to school for the social aspects of it. And trust me, it did show in my grades. I failed three of my five courses in first semester. I was given um, a warning. Then second semester, I failed oh. three again and I was on probation. So by the end of first year, I was pretty much gone. Six out of 10 courses failed. And I'm like, I have no idea how I'm going to tell my parents this because everybody is so used to me being an overachiever. So everybody is so used to me being the person who comes through, but yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> this time I never come through at all, you know? So, so I know that you can speak about it boldly now because you have realized the lessons that you would have learned from the experience. Yeah, but for sure. how did it affect you mentally in that space? 16, 17, 18 year old senior friends progressed and you were just... Yeah. And that's the thing. And I always had progressive friends because... I would never ever say that I had waste friends per se because people were talking to me, people were friends with me and at the same time they were still Mm -hmm. flourishing in their school career. And so I really had to sit in myself and I'm wondering then, why is it that everybody is making the time for both school and their social life? But for me, the disparity is just (laughs) beyond um, this galaxy. Like I'm pretty much doing 95% social, 5% school if I feel like. Listen, Jason, there were times when I used to even register for courses mm-hmm. and I didn't even go to the courses because I was so afraid of failing again. And it made no sense because that would defeat your oh. whole purpose. Yeah, so yeah, yeah. having a GPA in first year at, at 1.5 um, and then knowing that I have a second year to do, which is pretty much first year part two, I register mm-hmm. for a course again and I'm like, hmm. I changed my mind. I'm not going. But I didn't deregister. I didn't do anything. But the mental part of it was that um, I became so afraid. I became so embarrassed. Yeah. Um, I became so timid to, to take tests, timid to go into courses, timid as it relates to even my self-efficacy 
and belief that I could do something because I'm like, boy, this is a 100% course. So that means that I am not going to be able to even write. And the pass mark is 50%. I don't think I'm able to write 50% um, or get a 50% pass grade mm -hmm. because I have failed so many things in the 20s. And it's not only close fail, you know. It's like some 20% and some 10% mm -hmm. in some courses that would have required me to do like five, six different to, um different, what do you call it, assignments. And I'm still clocking 10s and 20s. So I'm like, it really affected me. And so at one point, I had to go to my lecturer and he said to me, I feel like you have some mental unwellness taking place. And so wow. I will, I will... I will make an appointment for you at the, the University Health Center. Once mm -hmm. again, the stigma that comes with you being mentally unwell because Jamaicans love to think that you're mad, yes? You're mad, yeah. So yeah. in my mind, I'm like, there's absolutely nothing, nothing wrong, wrong with, with you. And so I just started blaming everything like, oh, is my friends wasting my time? Is this um, wasting my time? I'm pretty much not saying that it is my fault. Mm -hmm. And maybe it was a case where I was just going through anxiety as it relates to the courses and depression in some cases, but on a, for a small extent. Um, and so I shied away. I didn't go to the, 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 um, the appointment and he asked me why and I told him that I had some other engagement, but really and truly I just could not could admit not the fact that too. I was just mentally unwell to take school at that time. All right, so moving on so on your journey, much. at what point, at what age, what incident, what epiphany, what dream, what happened to to pull you back to a level ground to say, all right, let me just get this together. I think more than anything else, I am self-motivated, but sometimes when I, I, I'm, I'm also of the thought that everything is figure out and everything will work out itself. And sometimes that's dangerous because when you think about that all the time, you don't try to put in the work or you don't try to, I wouldn't say hurry, but you don't, uh -huh. you don't do anything with urgency. But then one day my mother said to me, Leach, you're not graduate. Like, you're not graduate. Wow. Mark you, I didn't graduate from high school. I finished CSEC and I went to sixth form and I did well. But my graduation was based on my mock exams. And once again, thinking, oh, I don't need to be studying. I don't need to be doing anything um, that requires me to do any extra work because I'm mm -hmm. smart. Costed me the graduation um, walk. So I didn't want my graduation. Oh. And so I remember at that point, that was when I felt most disappointed in myself when I had to call my mother at high school on that day to tell her that I'm not graduating. And then to see that same thing repeat at um, you, you know, when my mother said, Boy, you're not graduating. Like, you don't never do that at high school. You're going to do it again. And I said, No, man. Mm -mm. You have to break the cycle. There are some things in life you want your mother to see before she dies. Yeah, and and I am a first generation, so I'm like definitely I cannot um, fail. I can't fail her now, um, and so I decided that I was going to go out and work mm -hmm. and try to see if I could get some form of training in the field, uh -huh. and then hopefully it would make me want to come back to school. And I think I did that. I forced myself to do that because I felt like if I was continuing school, continuing school, I would have stayed uninterested. Okay. But when you're flourishing in the workplace and they're saying, listen, you need the qualification, that's really what sends me back. I went back and I got a couple A's, I got a couple B's and I was doing hey. well. And then there was this one course. So now you're talking <laughs> about your four courses, four mm -hmm. times, there's this one course I did and I looking for graduation suit, everything, get the email, I got a 47 and the past month was 50. Wow. And when I said they say, I dropped in a little depression. You know what I did? I went on YouTube at the same time and I like typed in words of affirmation. Tell me that I'm a great person because I was losing it. And at this point, you can't talk to your mother. Mm -hmm. You can't talk to your father. You're too ashamed to tell friends. And so you're pretty much saying, YouTube have helped me. So I yeah. used to listen to words of affirmation every day. You are great. You are wonderful. You are enough. And I tried to believe it. And so I kept working. And I went back again, like, what's her name? Casey. Back again. So I went back again. <laughs> and then when I went back again, I failed another time. No, this time, no. I was caught up. When I tell you, I said, done, done. Yeah, where somebody fails, some of them say, me nah go back. Me nah go back. Even though you know you go back, me say, me nah go back. I done it done. Me not care where mother wants to say, me not care where father wants to say, me not care where 
And at that point, I did not go to school for the first semester, which would have been the graduation period for the cohort mm -hmm. before, because I could not bear me going to school in my normal clothes and seeing everyone coming into Carimac with a gown. You yeah. know, everyone with them nice hair and their makeup that day. And I'm like, this happened to me two times. I don't want nobody asking me, like, where's your gown or where's your whatever. So I said, I'm literally sitting out school. Mm -hmm. This is my final. This is my sixth year. And I'm sitting out school again because I'm saying I cannot stand. And it wasn't that I'm not happy for the graduates. I'm just saying I could not stand me not being there with my friends. Yeah. And so I decided that I was going to sit out. And then I think in December, I got an epiphany. Um, and that December, I was supposed to prepare for a next course because I could not pass that last journalism course. Mm -hmm. They actually switched me over to another program to do a final, to do a final, um, to do a final assessment. And in that one, they told me that I needed to speak. Now you know, say I love chat. Yeah. So I said, well, last chance saloon, and I did my best. And you know, luckily enough, um, that best became the best that counts yeah. um and i graduated finishing with a 98 and so i was pretty good you know the gpa never three bad but <laughs> that was the journey it was really really long it was really really long trust me so i know um, you had said one I, thing you had mentioned the word of affirmation i can it just came back to me when i was at jc as the first from your supervisor if i could probably insert a clip if i have a video um every Friday where we have great devotion, the boys will say, I am awesome. I'm great. Yeah. I'm going to have a yeah. great day because I believe in speaking positivity over your life because Absolutely. the things you speak have a way of manifesting, whether positive or negative. That so true. to wrap this whole session up, because I don't want to, you know, belong. Um, some yes. gems that you would drop for persons who are probably going through the same or about to embark on the university journey. Yeah. Um, so the first thing is, and I'm not even going to to um pretty top you need to really be prepared there are some things in life that you will never be prepared for but you uh -huh. need to be prepared in being prepared meaning open up your mind to the things that are possible you know yeah. whether it be passing or failing because sometimes you can feel as if you've done all that you needed to do and there may be a one mistake a one mishap uh -huh. um, and it will just probably throw you out of your tunnel vision but understand that everything is everything is working together for the bigger picture and so if you fail don't feel too down and i'm not going to tell you that you can't feel down but don't ever make it be a defining moment for you you know because you have to remember that people only know what success is when they know what failure is that's and deep. so if you do endure that, just know that you're not supposed to give up. The next thing that I want to tell people to do, to do, dare to do it. Because a lot of times we're afraid to do things. A lot of times we're, um, our mind is really what affects the physical. Because for me, mm -hmm. mentally, I thought that I couldn't do something and so I didn't go to my courses. But trust me, try to ensure that you're always mentally well. Because sometimes when you're mentally unwell, it can affect your physical as well. Another thing, university is no easy feat. So when you hear people say, oh, I can finish that in three years or whatever, like, don't take it lightly. You may be very passionate about something, but trust me, even the greatest students fall sometimes. So just yes. be open to that. And just please remember at the end of the day that everything is coming together for an ultimately good story. Awesome. So you must write your chapter and you must write your story. You must write your book. And it all depends on you. Like nobody else can do it for you. So that's it. Yeah. So also awesome. Thank you so much for taking the time to sit and talk with me on Life Lessons with Jason, Mr. Liz Smith. So all the best to you over there in Japan and our viewers. We'll see you another day at another time for another Life Lessons with Jason. Thank you for tuning in. Peace.